in this section we are going to do the laws of logarithms. So we've already studied the laws of exponents, we did that in 10c, and then we reviewed that in chapter 7 as well. We're now going to do the same process for the laws of logs. So we're going to develop them, determine equivalent forms, and apply them to simplify um, equations and expressions. So remember that the value of a log is the exponent the base is raised to, to equal value of the argument. For example, log base 2 of 32 means 2 to what exponent is 32? Well, I know 2 to the exponent of 5 is 32. Therefore, log base 2 of 32 must be 5. Log base 2 of 8, for example, means 2 to what exponent equals 8? Well, I know that 2 cubed equals 8. Therefore, log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. So let's use this to simplify some expressions. So, in the first one, I want to evaluate log base 2 of 32 plus log base 2 of 8. So we just evaluated what those were. Log base 2 of 32 was 5, log base 2 of 8 was 3, and 5 plus 3 is 8. Okay, this one here, log base 2 of 32 times 8. That would be log base 2 of 32 times 8 is 256. So to evaluate this, I want to know 2 to what exponent gives me 256? Well, 2 to the exponent of 8 gives me 256. So I know that this has a value of 8. So what I know right now is that log base 2 of 32 plus log base 2 of 8 is 8. And log base 2 of 32 times 8 is also 8. They have the same value. Okay, let's try one with subtraction. So we already know that log base 2 of 32 is 5 and log base 2 of 8 is 3. 5 take away 3 is 2. Over here, we're going to take 32 and 8 and this time divide them, which is 4. So log base 2 of 4 is really saying 2 to what exponent gives me 4? Well, 2 squared is 4, so log base 2 of 4 is 2. So now I know that log base 2 of 32 take away log base 2 of 8 is 2, and log base 2 of 32 divided by 8 is also 2. So this brings me to two logs. So we've seen it with numbers now. Let's look at it without numbers. Product law and quotient law. So the product law is any time we have a log with a base of C, and I multiply the arguments. This is really multiplying when you have two variables side by side. I can break it apart by adding. So multiplying makes something bigger. That's why we can break it apart by adding because adding also makes it bigger. So adding and multiplying go together. If I look at the quotient law, log base C, they're all log base C. M divided by N. Dividing makes things smaller. That's why I can take an argument that's divided and break it apart by subtracting the logs because subtracting also makes things smaller. Okay, so there's two laws, both of them on your formula sheet. Let's look at another example. So in this one here, I have log base 2 of 4 squared. So that's log base 2 of 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 16. So to evaluate this, I want to know 2 to what power gives me 16? Well, I know 2 to the 4 gives me 16, so this has a log value of 4. Over here, I have 2 times log base 2 of 4. Log base 2 of 4 says 2 to what exponent gives me 4? And I know 2 squared gives me 4, and 2 times 2 is 4. So what I know right now is that log base 2 of 4 squared is equal to 4, and 2 times log base 2 of 4 is also 4. They are the same value. I notice the base is the same, part of the argument is the same, but this exponent of 2 can come down in front. So this here is an example of the power law. Here's how the power law looks. The power law says I take log base c base c. If I have an argument that is m to the exponent of p, this p can come down and be in front and multiply through. Conversely, I can say it the other way around as well. 
So looking at this, I can say if I have a number in front, it can come up to be an exponent. Okay, so that argument exponent can come down or it can go back up. Okay, let's look at another one. 2 to the exponent of log base 2 of 32. So we already know that log base 2 of 32 from the beginning of the lesson was 5. And 2 to the exponent of 5 is 32. Let's look at another one. 3 to the exponent of log base 3 of 81. So log base 3 of 81 is the answer to this question. 3 to what exponent gives me 81? Well, that's a 4. So instead of having 3 to the log base 3 of 81, I can have 3 to the exponent of 4, which is also 81. Okay, so notice here that the bases are the same. The base of the exponent and the base of the log are the same. The base of the exponent, the base of the log are the same. And they both kind of answer out to just be the argument. So the argument is the answer. The argument is the answer. So this is not on the formula sheet, but this is when the log is an exponent. Not on the formula sheet, but worth noting. So b to the log base b of x equals to x where x is greater than 0. Here's what's happening. Exponential functions and log functions are inverses of one another. So an exponent and a log are inverses of one another. They undo each other. So since the bases are the same, those operations undo each other. In other words, what's really happening is it cancels out. Taking an exponent, taking a log, inverses of one another, they undo each other, and you're left with the argument as the answer. This only works when the bases are the same. This is the key to this. So when the bases are the same, you can just cancel. Okay. Now, remember at the beginning of this lesson, we said that log base 2 of 32 was 5 because 2 to the exponent of 5 is 32. We can also evaluate this on the graphing calculator. So since I already know that log base 2 of 32 is 5, we've already proved that, changing it to exponential form, I just want to show you how you can now do this on the graphing calculator. So one way is to take log of the argument divided by log of the base. So I'm evaluating log base 2 of 32. So log of the argument divided by log of the base, log of 32 divided by log of 2 is 5. That works out. Or you could do on the TI-84 or newer, you can do um, a log template, which is math alpha math. When you do math alpha math, you get this template, log of fill in the blank, of fill in the blank and you can actually fill in the 2 and the 32 that is also equal to 5. So I just want to look at that TI-83 way of entering it in a little bit closer because it's going to help us with the change of base formula. So to evaluate log base 2 of 32 on the TI-83 you could enter in log of the argument divided by log of the base. When we do this, we really have an invisible base of 10, and we saw that that answer was 5. Well, you can actually use any base at all, as long as it's the same for both, and you'll still get that answer of 5. Let's try. Let's try it with a base of 7. So log base 7 of 32 divided by log base 7 of 2 still has an answer of 5. So I could have log base 0.5 of 32 divided by log base 5, 0.5 of 2, the base is the same, it still has an answer of 5. So I could have log of any base at all of 32 divided by log of any base at all of 2 and have that be the answer of 5, which is log base 2 of 32. You've seen that in three different bases, 10, 7 and 0.5. So what this brings us to is the change of base formula, which is on your formula sheet. So this is saying log of any base of x. So in our example, it was log base 2 of 32. So they're just saying in general, any base, any argument can be written as log of the argument divided by log of the base to any other base at all. So this is a change of base formula. We don't use it that often, but it does come in handy, so it's definitely worth knowing. And the 83s, of course, you'll use that all the time. 
Okay, so now that we know the logs, let's put them into good use by writing things as single logs, and then we're going to look at expanding things, going backwards, the process of simplifying. So let's try this one. I want to write it as a single log. The very first thing I check is that these all have a base of 5. And so since they do, I'm ready to go. So logs that are added are combined by multiplying the arguments. Logs that are subtracted are combined by dividing the argument. So I can put that all together as one big log like that. And then I just do 10 times 75, 750, divided by 2, 375. So now I've written it as a single log. Let's try this one here. Write this as a single log. Okay, so first thing that I need to look at is I have a bunch of variables in the base and as the argument. So since I can't take the log of a negative number or a negative base, I need to state my restrictions. So let's do the base. The base has to be positive, but it can't be 1. So it has to be greater than 0, but not equal to 1. Okay, the argument. I have two different arguments, P and Q, and both of those have to be positive. So there are my restrictions. So let's go ahead and simplify this as a single log. So this time I have numbers in front, and numbers that are in front come up to be exponents of the arguments. So I'll rewrite this as log base A of P to the 3 halves plus log base A of Q cubed minus log base a of p to the one half. And now I'm at a point that I can simplify just like I did in the last question. They all have a base of a, that's important to notice. And logs that are added are multiplied. Logs that are subtracted are divided. So it would look like that. Okay, so I'm going to use my laws of exponents to simplify. So p to the 3 halves divided by p to the 1 half is p to the 3 halves take away 1 half is 2 halves, and 2 halves is just 1 p cubed. Now you don't really need the exponent of 1 there, so you could just write this as p q cubed with all of the restrictions that a is greater than 0 but not 1, and p and q are greater than 0. Okay, let's try another one. Write the following as a single log. So before I do anything, I want to look at my restrictions. So x has to be greater than 0, and x plus 4 has to be greater than 0, which means x is greater than negative 4. So I am going to state my restrictions as just x greater than 0 because that covers both of them. So state your restrictions before you do anything, before you change the question, because your restriction should be based on the original expression. So this will just be log of x divided by x plus 4. So when I'm subtracting logs, I can combine them together by dividing the arguments. Now this has a common base of 10. I don't necessarily need to write it in. Now you can write your division using a division symbol, or you can write your division using a fraction. Because this is a rational expression, I'm going to leave it as a fraction. Okay, let's look at this one here. So I'm going to factor my arguments just to help me with my restrictions. So I have x minus 3, x plus 3, minus log base 2 of x plus 3, x minus 2. Okay, so before I get too far here, I am going to state my restrictions for my logs. So I have here that this has to be greater than 0. So this expression here has to be greater than 0 because it's a log. I know it factors as x minus 3, x plus 3. So I know it's a quadratic that opens up with x-intercepts at negative 3 and positive 3. So since I'm looking at where it is positive, that would be this part and this part. I have that x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than positive 3. In the next one, let's look at that. I always like to do my quadratic restrictions by drawing out a little picture. So x squared plus x minus 6 is a quadratic that opens up 
and I see from the way that it factors that it has an x-intercept at negative 3 and at positive 2. So I'm looking at where it is positive, which again is the ends of the graph. So x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than 2. So I don't want to have four sets of restrictions. I want to really come up with something that covers everything. So x less than negative 3 covers both of them. They're the same. And then I have x greater than 3 and x greater than 2. So always go with the bigger one, which is this one here. So these two are the restrictions, x less than negative 3 or greater than 3. So now that I've factored it, stated my restrictions, I'm ready to simplify. So to simplify logs that are subtracted, that have the same base, we can combine them as one log by dividing the arguments. So I can write this as log base 2 of x minus 3, x plus 3, divided by x plus 3, x minus 2. Okay, and now I look for common factors to the numerator and the denominator. So that's the x plus 3. So my final answer will be log base 2 of x minus 3 over x minus 2. Okay, let's try this one. This time we're going to expand. So it's already been condensed and simplified, so I want to expand. I do have variables here, so I need to state some restrictions. So I cannot take the square root of a negative, nor can I take the log of a negative. So that x has to be greater than 0. In the denominator, any number that I put in for y when I square it will be positive. So I'm good to go there. So y, there is no restriction. It's just an element of the reals. So the only restriction I have is that x has to be greater than 0. So to expand this, I'm kind of undoing the process. So what I'm going to look for is I'm going to have numbers that are multiplied are going to be separated by adding the logs together. So I'm going to have in the numerator log base 4 of 16 plus log base 4 of the square root of x minus, because I'm dividing in the denominator, log base 4 of the cube root of x squared. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write all of my roots using rational exponents. So I'll have log base 4 of 16 plus log base 4 of x to the 1 half minus log base 4 of y to the 2 thirds. And then anything that's an exponent I can bring down to be in front as a coefficient. So I can have log base 4 of 16 plus 1 half log base 4 of x minus 2 thirds log base 4 of y. So that would be my final answer. If you wanted to, you could evaluate log base 4 of 16. You could call it 2, but I think that that would be, I want it like fully expanded. I would leave it like that, but you could, there'd not be nothing wrong with that. You could write it like this as well. Because 4 squared is 16. Okay, so either way is fine. Okay, so one last question for us to do here. We have if m and n are both greater than 0 and p is equal to m cubed n, what would the fully expanded expression for log of n be? Okay, well, let's look at what log of n is. We have to figure out what n is. So I'm going to use this expression here. So I have p equals m cubed n. So divide both sides by m cubed and n is equal to p over m cubed. Okay, so let's list that in our log. So we have log of n, and n is p over m cubed. Okay, so we have a restriction for m, m is greater than zero, and we have a restriction for n which is greater than zero. I'm just gonna add on for this one here that p is also greater than zero. So to simplify this, what am I going to do? I'm going to fully expand this. So logs that are in the numerator can stay like that. I'm dividing by, which means subtracting, log of the denominator. And then I would just bring my 3 down in front. And that would be my final answer.
Okay, so to summarize this lesson here, logs with the same base that are added, because it makes it bigger, can be combined as one log by multiplying the arguments, and of course, vice versa. Logs with the same base that are subtracted, subtract, subtraction makes it smaller, can be combined as one log by dividing the arguments and vice versa. Numbers in front that are multiplied by logs, so numbers that are multiplied by logs, can be raised to an exponent of the argument or vice versa, they can be brought down. And raising a base to a log with the same base cancels each other out to equal to the argument. That's a good trick, but again, not on the formula sheet. So do you know what organic mathematicians throw into their fireplace? Well, they throw in natural logs. And I'm sure those natural logs are non-GMO and vegan and gluten-friendly as well. So I hope this lesson helped. You guys have practice questions one to six. All the answers are on D2L. And then you can go on to your textbook questions. And I will see you next time for the video on section 8.4, which is our last section of the chapter.